Hey guys, so tonight I'm working on my Sketchbox inks using the Pigma liners that came in the April Sketchbox. Um, after inking this, I'm going to allow it to dry fully for 24 hours so the ink can cure, and I'm going to work on this in time lapse. So the BB brush is actually a lot of fun to use. Um, it can give really generous juicy lines. I wasn't really doing it justice because um, the paper is kind of small and I also have these like plastic gummed edges that keep getting in the way of really sweeping strokes. But the BB, if you're looking for a larger brush pin that has a single piece nib that won't like splay out or do brush uh, dry brush, this seems like a great pen for that. Um, I really enjoy it. I will probably add this to my regular lineup because it has a brush that feels a lot like using a Copic Super Brush, um, except that it's black and it should be Copic and waterproof. So that is something I'm definitely excited about. I want to leave the fish relatively un, um, unfilled in, undetailed, because I want to use the tangerine bombay and the canary yellow prismacolor and even this wasn't included in my sketch box but i thought it would look really cool i wanted to use the fw pearlescent um in this piece as well as i had purchased this mission gold um turquoise blue it was on sale at jerry's and i thought i would use that for the background because i thought the orange the yellow and the turquoise would really pop so I need to let these two pieces dry for 24 hours before I can continue working on them. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Hey guys, so today I'm going to be working on my sketch box for April challenge. Um, I've decided to augment my box with a couple of things. Um, I am also going to be using Mission Gold and Turquoise Blue for the water and uh, pH pearlescent. Um, I mean FW, Dale Rowney, FW Pearlescent, liquid acrylic, as sort of like an iridescent white. Um, the materials that came in my box that I will be using are this tangerine colored Bombay India ink, this Simply Simmons watercolor round. I already used my Pigma markers to ink these koi fish on fluid watercolor paper. And I also received this Prismacolor alcohol marker. All right, so to begin with, I'm going to go ahead and paint in some of the water using this turquoise blue. And this is the first time I've used um, this brand. So it should be interesting. Now, um, the Simply Simmons brush, this is a fairly common watercolor brush um, you can get these at Michaels you can get them at some art supply stores it's a synthetic and the whole point of De La Rowney Simply Simmons ooh all right is that no matter the size of the brush they're going to all cost the same oh this mission gold does not have any sort of any sort of color to it there's like no pigment in there and I used a fair amount. Hmm. And I also noticed that the bristles on my Simply Simmons have already started to uh, sort of bend out of shape, which is a little disconcerting because this is the first time I've used it other than in a couple of tests for you guys on camera. Right, that's a little more opaque, but not really. So this size four round is just not intended to cover large areas of um, watercolor. Not only is it not big enough, but the brush itself can't hold enough water because it's a synthetic. So the way um, watercolor brushes work, at least natural fiber brushes, is um, so the hairs all have like, like little nooks and crannies along the length of the hair and that holds the water for you. On synthetic brushes like this, A, there's no belly to the brush, it's just straight up and down, and um, there's nothing in the brush to kind of grip on to the water, so it pretty much falls out of the brush as you're bringing it over to your paper. Um, 
Now, there are good, set, good synthetics on the market. I'm not saying don't buy synthetic brushes. I'm just saying um, this Simply Simmons is not a very good synthetic if you want to do watercolor. Now, I do use and enjoy synthetics for other things. I use them to apply uh, Copic Opaque White, for example, to paper. I use them when I'm dealing with masking fluid. I use them uh, if I'm going to use gouache, but they're just not, or, or if I'm using that Winsor & Newton Gold ink because it is, it is killer on natural hair brushes. So I do use um, synthetic brushes on anything that I wouldn't want. Ugh, I really don't like this brush. Anything that I wouldn't want to ruin a natural fiber brush with. Um, ugh. I just got a big gob of that Mission watercolor. This is not nearly as turquoise as I had hoped. Not nearly as dark. Um, and it's not dissolving super well in the water. But that isn't a sketch brush, bleh, a sketch box problem. That's a mission problem. And I did buy them on like super sale at Jerry's. So there's probably the reason for that. I'm finding this synthetic brush to be difficult to control and frustrating to paint with. Um, it just doesn't have the sort of snap you would expect from a real watercolor brush. And considering the price is $2.99, uh, you know, what can I really expect? I'm a little bit disappointed uh, that it was included in Sketchbox considering how common it is. But this is the basic edition. Um, and I have yet to see what this month's premium box looks like, so they might have gotten something just like phenomenally better. All right, so I'm going to allow this to fully dry. All right, so my first layer of blue has dried, and I'm gonna go ahead and pull out my Canary Yellow Prismacolor, which came in the set, and I'm referencing Koi on my computer. So if I get quiet or I pause for a long period of time, it's because I'm looking at the reference. And I use alcohol markers on cellulose-based watercolor paper, like fluid, fairly often. So I know how this paper handles markers. And I've used Prismacolors on these markers before. I actually use Prismacolors uh, fairly often in my studio. If you watch my tutorials on this channel, you'll notice quite a few involve um, Prismacolor markers to some extent. The nice thing about Prismacolors is you can put water-based media on top and it won't lose translucent. Like it'll still say, stay vibrant and beautiful because it doesn't, the two don't activate one another. Um, alcohol inks are not reactive to water and water-based inks are a bit reactive to alcohol so you might want to do if you're going to do a technique similar to this you might want to do your alcohol first oh and one of my commenters mentioned that she doesn't need to see everything laid out she wants to only see it up close so i will oblige and uh, give you a close-up view since you asked. Another nice thing about alcohol inks is you don't need to actually wait for them to dry before you apply your water-based inks because the alcohol inks dry almost instantly. And um, for those of you looking for a spot of tutorial, I'm sort of doing like a crescent moon shape or a little dot on these fish to imply scales. And I'm using a flicking motion of the wonderful brush nib to push the um, sort of striations in the fin. So um, since I can apply on top of um, alcohol marker immediately, I'm going to take some of my Bombay ink 
and drip it into some water because I want sort of a light wash to start up with. I want to build up my intensity. And I cleaned out my Simmons brush, although you wouldn't be able to tell because it still has some of that persistent blue in it. And I'm going to mix up my tangerine and start painting. So the thing with India ink, oh shoot, dang it, see, um, that's what I was complaining about, about these stupid synthetic brushes, is that they won't hold the water like at all, so I can't even pause to look at reference without it dripping out of my brush. That's why as a watercolor artist, I really don't use too many synthetics for my watercolor. I don't like them. They're cheap and that's about the best selling point for, the, for synthetics. And I'm sure there are some of you guys who enjoy using them. And I think that's great and I don't intend to, I'm not maligning your decision to use synthetics. Um, I just don't like them at all, except to apply like opaque white. So, um, of course I wanna hear from you if you enjoy using synthetics, but it doesn't make my dislike of them any less legitimate. Now, um, I think I started saying, and I didn't finish, that um, India ink, when it's dry, it becomes waterproof as well. So it's water solvent, water soluble while wet and waterproof when dry. And I put the yellow down first under the gold to make it, I mean, under the orange to make it um, just feel richer since I am building up layers of the orange. All right, so my first layer of tangerine has mostly dried and I added some more tangerine into my water solution and I might end up having to add a lot more. I didn't wanna, I can, I know, just work directly with what's in the bottle, but I didn't want to because um, that it's, it's an intense color. It's a very vibrant orange, which is true. The color Koi's do have on them. Koi, singular, I guess. No S on Koi. Um, <laughs> and I will work up to that point but um, white and orange koi tend to have um, like a little bit of buildup in terms of pigment. So I wanted to give myself room to work. Although the next layer will probably be straight from the bottle. All right, so my layer is almost dry. And I'm going to start working directly from the bottle. So I want to get as much of the orange out as I can. And you can see that orange is really intense. I don't know if um, Tangerine was sent to all um, Basic Box subscribers or if um, like they pick different colors for different people. But I, this is a good color um, for me because it's not something I already have in my collection. And a heads up for those of you who are so insistent that I get the premium box instead. Uh, so I went ahead and I bit the bullet and next month I'm going to be reviewing a basic box and a premium box side by side. Um, that's, a seven, that's 70 bucks out of my pocket right there. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy it. Um, if you in general enjoy my content and you want to see more of those sort of comparisons, you can help facilitate that by becoming a backer on Patreon. So I'm just adding orange specks here and there. And I think I'm also going to go back to the yellow and just add some yellow dots here and there. Another thing about Prismacolors is you can build up, like with alcohol inks, you can build up the color to make it a little bit darker. And I do want to encourage a slight amount of bleed in certain areas. 
just because it'll look a little more natural, I think. All right, so my ink has dried and um, now I have a couple of options. I can go in with the blue and sort of add some shading before I do another layer of blue on the background, or I can go in with a black pigma to add some of the black details that Koi have. And what I think I'm gonna do is I think I'm going to go in with the blue to add some shading. All right, so I've got a freshly cleaned brush and these Koi would have blue shading along their sides sort of reflecting the water and their eyes would definitely have it and you can already see um, the orange isn't getting reactivated by the watercolor and I actually I'm gonna want to blend that out or dab that up a little bit just because it was getting a little intense and this will help those yellow, white, and orange fish look like they actually belong in this environment. It's okay to leave some white as sort of a highlight. Now the India ink is causing a little bit of a resist with the water. I'm gonna dab up some of that excess blue just to sort of lighten it and let that dry. All right, so that layer seems to be mostly dry. Um, I am going to attempt, I say attempt because I don't have any faith. I'm going to attempt to get this uh, mission watercolor to um, sort of darken up enough that I can use it for the background, especially with this wonderful synthetic brush. And because it doesn't hold any water at all, I need to work quickly if I want to avoid areas getting, um, like sort of having uneven coverage. Or rather, like, uh, what I really don't want is like streaking from dry lines. And I've got some of the Mission Go or Mission watercolor as it is. No, is it Mission or is it Mage Magello? It's Mission, Mission Gold, yeah. So I've got some of that in a bottle cap and I'm using the cup that I'd pre-mixed as a, sort of like the water to sort of blend it out. I'm trying to work as quickly as I possibly can because like I said, this brush is not putting much water down on the paper. So I need to be able to work fast. This brush just doesn't hold much water. That's definitely uh, something. One of the cheap art supplies you can kind of get away with starting with. Um, just keep in mind that it is going to make painting a lot more difficult for you. So if you're just starting out, it's fine to have some synthetics um, in your collection. And there are some good synthetics. Uh, there are some that behave a lot more like natural uh, fibers than this. This is not a particularly good synthetic and there are plenty of oper there are plenty of times when a synthetic is just fine um, unfortunately doing washes is probably one of the worst uses for a synthetic although uh, my mop brushes by Cotman are both synthetics and I really like them and they do a good job holding and dispersing water at least good enough to, to accomplish what I want to accomplish uh, but they are shaped differently and they're made by a different company and the fibers themselves aren't as springy as these. These are very springy. So you might actually find this brush is a good brush for like brush lettering. Although you're going to be constantly dipping your brush in water as you can see me doing here. And that little pat I had of concentrated watercolor straight from the tube is almost used up. Hopefully I can finish this. I got a big glob on it of it on the tip of my brush. 
so I'm definitely going to get an even drawing, which I guess I'm okay with because it gives kind of a, a unique watery sort of effect. But because I was kind of applying my water in a weird way, it's not, um, I can't get a uniform wash. And to be honest, a size four round, it's just not, even if you were um, using natural bristles, a size four round is just not the size you want to be using. It's going to be very difficult to cover the area, but a synthetic that doesn't hold any water at all makes it even harder. So I'm going to let that dry and clean out my brush. So while parts of this are still wet, I'm going to go ahead and drop some FW iridescence into the water. And this is where synthetics are your friend because since they won't hold on to the water or the paint, you can gently tap them to do like a splatter effect. I'm trying to be careful not to put it on the fish just yet. And I am taking advantage of the fact that some parts of my paper are still very wet because it's going to make that iridescence disperse. This is a technique I've been using frequently with my con mail in watercolors, especially for like a starry sky sort of effect. And people seem to enjoy it. With these fish, it's gonna look a bit like bubbles. All right, now to let the whole thing dry. All right, so this is mostly dry and I'm going to use the BB which is black to add in some black scales and to also um, delineate the eyes. And it seems like the pigment ink does not necessarily want to go over the Bombay India ink very easily. It's sort of resisting a little bit. So I would give it plenty of time to dry if you do want to use the um, pigment ink over your Bombay ink. And my usual recommended dry time when it comes to inks is 24 hours if you got it which is why sometimes it takes me a really long time to do these um, art snacks sketch box challenges because I have to give it a fair shake. And I'm using the BB brush and I really like it. It's capable of really nice juicy lines. Feels like a great um, larger single nib, like a um, single piece, that's the word I'm looking for, brush nib. So if you're looking for something like that to add into your traditional medium, traditional medium repertoire, I recommend you give it a shot. Yeah, it looks like, um, the pigma that I put over the alcohol marker has already dried, whereas the pigma that I put over the Bombay India ink is shiny, and shiny means wet to me, so I'm going to give that plenty of time to dry. I'm also going to draw in some details on the fins, just some simple lines to imply, um, because fins have like these little spines in them that help them stay um, rigid when an animal like a fish is moving through the water. So I am just delicately drawing in those little spines with the FB. All right, looking good so far. Now I can also add in some more delicate looking 
scale indications using the FB, sort of like um, the exterior of the scale. And that'll give the koi a little bit more definition. All right, so I'm going to let that dry and then I'm going to paint in some iridescent details with the FW acrylic iridescent ink. All right, so my paint is a little bit more dry. Now it's time for the PHW pearlescent and this did not come in my sketch box. This is something I've had in my studio for a while. I am using the Simply Simmons brush with it. And I'm just painting a few iridescent scales and some iridescent details on the fins. And it looks like my pigment ink, at least on the Prismacolor, isn't going anywhere, so that's good. And kind of like the Bombay India ink, as long as this is wet, you can sort of blend it out with water if you want to. But once it's dry, it's not going anywhere. And it is translucent if you don't apply it with too heavy a hand. At least the, the pearl color is. It's one of the, the color, I mean, um, I have this and I think I have like a turquoise hidden away somewhere, but the pearl is the one I use the most because it works with almost everything. And once that's dry, I will go ahead and pull out my Copic Opaque White for some final details. All right, and this is where stiffer synthetic watercolor brushes kind of shine. Um, this is my Opaque White, and I usually just sort of like mix it with water in the cap a little bit. This is a little bit of a larger brush than I would normally use. Um, it's a lot larger than I would normally use. And yeah, the iridescence uh, does lighten some areas up, but not as much as say the opaque white would. And I find Copic's opaque white very easy to work with. Um, I hate the tiny applicator bottle with the tiny brush. I prefer to use my own brush. I think it works a lot better. Um, and this is another item that was not included in my sketch box, but I decided to pull it out because it would help make the finished piece look a little bit better. And this is another product that if you add water, you can blend it out a bit. Mm. Unfortunately, my pigment didn't dry entirely, so it is trying to, to smear. And then on this fish. And the trick I showed you with PH Martins, if you really water it down, you can do the same thing with the opaque white using a synthetic brush and just sort of tapping it. But I think we're gonna call it good. We're gonna call it done at least for this sketch box challenge. So, um, I'm Becky Hilburn. I hope you guys enjoyed this sketch box challenge video for April. Um, I used the supplies in the basic box as well as a few of my own. Um, if you have any questions other than why don't you buy the premium box, please let me know in the comments below. Um, if there's any materials you'd like to see me try, anything you're curious about, you can always send me a question. And if you enjoy content like this and you'd like to make more possible, please consider checking out my Patreon uh, at patreon.com slash soup. For the rest of this review, um, please, including prices, please check out my blog, natosoup.blogspot.com. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you later. Bye.